I'm T-Pain, and welcome to Let's Learn C++. Today's topic is dynamic memory. Dynamic memory is when you remember a different version of something than someone else. It doesn't matter what the other person thinks though, you are right, I guarantee it. <laughs> All right, so most allocations of memory we've been dealing with in the past have been created off of the stack. The stack is where local variables are stored in memory and is managed automatically. Sometimes, however, we need random memory to be stored during runtime. Memory that is generated on the fly is pulled from the heap memory. The heap is a memory that is managed manually. So you create it, then you delete it. And if you forget to delete things, then we'll get to that in a bit. This dynamic memory is allocated or created using the keyword new and returns an address where the value is stored. So let's look at an example. Here we have our usual setup code. Then in our main block, we have the creation of a po int pointer called p, and it is being set to a new instance of an int that has a value of one being passed in to the arguments. Now, that's really just the simplest form of dynamic memory allocation. You have a pointer that's gonna store the address of the newly created value, and then you have the creation of that value. And then we can output the value at that as we learned in a previous tutorial. And below that, we have our pointer pointing to another dynamic memory allocation of the value two. So what happens to the old value that we just created? It's been pushed into memory, but we don't have anything to remove it from memory. Instead, we point our pointer to a new place in memory altogether. So what happens to it? Well, let's just go ahead and run our code and find out. All right, so now that we've run our program, we get one being output, which is the first instance that the pointer is pointing to, and then we have two being output right here. Okay, perfect. That's exactly what we expect, but what happens to that one that's still in memory? Well, there's no errors down here in the error list, and if we click through all our windows, there's no errors actually being output. So how do we track such a thing? Well, I'm not gonna get into that just yet. That's something we'll discuss in our next tutorial. But for now, know that this is bad. This is very bad because we are now seeing one of the problems with dynamic memory allocation. This right here is a memory leak. This is where some data is taking up memory, but we no longer have access to it and cannot delete it. If you've ever played a terrible video game or used a program where it got slower the longer you used it, this is probably why. There are several remedies to this problem, and the simplest is the delete operator, or the delete keyword. Delete is super simple to use. Just place it before the pointer in memory you wish to release back to the heap. Note that this does not delete the pointer because the pointer is created on the stack. Delete only deletes the value at the pointer's address. And here we've added the keyword delete and our pointer to delete this new instance of one up above that we created. And then we just paste that down below as well to remove this newly created uh, int two here. And that leads to very clean memory management. Now, what do you think happens if we instead comment out this line 11? Now we no longer have P being set to a new value, but the instance is being deleted from memory. What do you think is gonna happen? Let's save our program and run it. Now we will have a runtime error saying that uh, there is a read access violation. Basically what's going on is our, we're trying to grab a value at memory that is no longer allocated off the heap with the value. So it's throwing an error. Cool. So it's good to know that Visual Studio will try to stop us if we're accessing invalid memory. Very, very good. All right. So now we've seen the two dangers of working with this. The second danger that we were just looking at is dangling pointers, pointers that point to a non-existent value and results in data corruption and often crashes. So now I'm going to paste in some more code here. And the very first thing is I have this worst function ever up top, and it is just going to return a pointer to an int. And all we're doing is just returning a new instance of an int. Ordinarily with data on the stack, the code will be deleted from memory automatically at the end of the code block. With heap memory, however, it is there for the duration of our program until we manually delete it, regardless of where it is created. So dynamic memory created within a function, within this function, will keep existing after the function ends. 
So notice this is the worst function ever. There's much better ways to handle dynamic memory allocation than returning a loose pointer or something like that. And we'll get to those in just a bit. So for now, just delete and forget. It was just something I wanted to point out to you. Now we have something even worse, even worse than that function I just showed you. This is gonna be a create function and all it's doing is creating a variable i set to a value of eight and then returning the address of that local variable. Now the problem with this is that that address that we're returning will no longer have a value once this function or code block ends. Below that we have a function called set seven and all it's doing is taking in a, an end pointer and setting it to a value of seven. Now ordinarily this code block would be just fine, but I will explain why this whole lot of code is bad in just a minute. So next we have our pointer initially being set to a value of create eight, which is just creating eight that's no longer in memory. Then we're gonna go ahead and output the address, output the value, and then we're gonna use the set 7p to set the value of p to seven, and then we're gonna output this, all right? And let's see what we get if we press F5 to run the code. We get p initially, the address is pointing to this address, and then when we try to get the value at p, we're getting this garbage value of 258 million in here. That's actually what we'd expect because we're pointing to a value that has been erased from memory. Okay, so then when we run set seven, we're setting that value that the address is pointing to, to seven, which is okay. So what's the problem here? I'm gonna go ahead and close out the program here. And all I did was uncomment this line here, line 20, and we're gonna run it again. And now watch what happens. Weird. So where before we were seeing this value as being set to seven, it is now set to some garbage value. That is because initially we were pointing to an address that was released. And since it was released, since that address was released back to the stack, it went ahead and assigned some other data over it and it resulted in us getting this new garbage value. So we no longer can set that properly, which is bad, it's very bad. So that is one of the dangers of dangling pointers. This is a dangling pointer right here. It's a pointer which points to a bad place in memory. Cool. Now note if we do uncomment this line of code and comment out that first and run it, everything will run just fine. We'll have the value of three being set initially and then we'll have seven, set seven work just fine. Very cool. So it, again, it was just because our pointer was pointing to an address that was released up above. Now in our next tutorial, we will cover dynamic memory allocations for arrays, AKA dynamic arrays. Some of you may be horrified in the past over this subject, but I'm going to make it easy for you. Uh, finally, the C++ core guidelines say F.42 says, return a T star or return a pointer to indicate position only. And F.43 says, never directly or indirectly return a pointer or reference to a local object, which is just what we saw up above. So this example right here with create eight is a prime example of F.43. Uh, owners and shared weak and unique pointers are better solutions and will be covered in a later tutorial. All right, I'd highly recommend challenging your skills at hackerrank.com. Special thanks to my Patreon supporters, JK, Marcus G, and Yu Chang H. And as always, like, subscribe, and keep the dream alive. Mm -hmm.